Thank you so much, Meg. And I have some slides to share with you all today. So let me just cue those up. Uh, and yes, a virtual event expert is taking longer than 25 seconds. <laughs> the good stuff. One second, everyone. And then Meg, if you could let me know once you see my slides, um, that would be really appreciated. All right, here we go. There we go. All right, let's go full screen with these. Uh, present. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And Meg, thank you so much for that amazing introduction. Um, and what I'm going to be talking to you all about today is, you know, our favorite word of the last, you know, 10, 10 years, book busy and burnt out, right? So everyone is experiencing burnout. And that has just been, you know, the pandemic after the pandemic, right? We, we had the global COVID-19 pandemic. And now we're in another pandemic where folks are realizing that they weren't taking care of their mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, or even financial health. So we're super busy. We're doing a lot. We're doing great things but we're not taking care of ourselves in the most deepest and most important ways. Um, I've been affected by burnout more times than I'd like to admit. And that was what caused me to really want to specialize in this and talk to folks like, hey, you know, burnout looks different for everyone. Um, for me personally, burnout has looked like panic attacks. It has looked like, you know, getting extra productive, which I was surprised by. So sometimes when I am burned out, what happens is that I get into this realm. Me and my my friends and colleagues will um, laugh about it. We call it the delusion realm, where you know um, I just want to keep going. I cannot find a way to stop, to slow down, to get back to equilibrium. I'm just like add more, add more, add more, do more, do more, do more, and you know. So now when I see myself getting into that zone, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. it may seem like it's a positive thing, but what's actually happened is that I am literally beyond my capacity. So this presentation, I'm going to talk to you all around how to identify burnout and what to do, you know, to avoid burnout in the first place. So after this session, you'll leave understanding how to identify burnout, what to do when you feel burnt out, um, what happens after burnout, and just overall how to avoid it, right? Um, is it perfect? Then are you going to be able to avoid it every single time? I'm going to be honest and transparent with you all. No. The world we live in, unfortunately, does not make room for us to do that. Things are changing by the second, um, and there are so many things beyond our control. But what I want to help you focus on is the things that you can control and how to be preventative instead of, um, you know, you know, preventative and be proactive before something happens instead of being, you know, suffering the, the pains from it after something has happened. So what can we do before? And then if it does get you to the after part, what can we do after? So again, just a little, you know, some cute, fun photos of my background. Um, and here are some fun photos of me, you know, embracing burnout and taking a trip. I don't know why I love having animals on my head, <laughs> um, but I hope that made you smile a little bit. Um, I want to start you off with a quote today, right? Which is, don't wait for life to force you to make a change. Make that change consciously and on your own time. So that goes right back into the factor of being proactive, doing something before you need to, right? And oftentimes we wait, we're like, you know, procrastination. Uh, we wait till the last minute. We're like, oh, I have time. I have time. I have time. And as humans, one of the hardest thing for us to tell is time. And I say that because we may think, okay, I'm, you know, we see this most oftentimes, you know, especially within um, ourselves, right? With ladies, right? We're getting ready. Like I'll be done in five minutes when in or our brains, we think we'll be done in five minutes, but in reality, we need at least another 20, 30 minutes, right? My, um, and so, you know, we need to be able to tell our time better as well as leave room for error, right? Within whatever plans you're making, always leave room for error. And that will also help with burnout. But I'll talk about that more in just a second. Um, all of the content and all of the information I share follows my five P's framework, which is all about purpose, plan, produce, profit, play. So I'll just give you a little summary of each one. Purpose is all about finding your core, finding your why, why you're doing something that you want to do. Um, then plan is essentially creating a plan of, you know, what, what you're going to do. Um, production, produce, production is all about how you're going to do it. What steps are you going to take to actually bring that plan to reality? 
profit is what do you get out of it, right? And profit doesn't have to be, you know, I'm getting a financial payout, but what emotional things happen from, you know, doing this work or doing this activity? How do you feel after, right? How does this benefit me? So that's what profit is about. And then play is all about celebrating, refreshing yourself, refreshing your mind, refreshing your body before moving on and, you know, kind of restarting the cycle. Um, I use this to apply to the majority of work we do with businesses and business owners, as well as professionals, but this could be applied to any part of your life, right? Why are you going to do something? What's your plan of what steps are you going to take to get it done? How are you going to get it done? What do you get in return, right? We are humans. We are self-interested. Let's not try to avoid that. So figure out how do you benefit and even volunteer work, even giving of yourself, there is something that you gain in return, whether that's, you know, a good feeling, um, you know, you get to honor your religious group, you get, you feel happy, right? So there are different ways to profit, even when you're giving of yourself and then play, just celebrating the work that we're doing because we don't do that enough, right? We just start the cycle over again without actually embracing and celebrating how far we've come and just taking a break to have some fun, right? Which is another reason why we end up in burnout. So this part, right, how to avoid burnout as well as identify it is all about inside of the how, right? And so, you know, I am guilty of this exact pose where, you know, you're working long hours, you're, you're, you're cranking the midnight oil, and then I don't know where you realize your head is, you know, slowly going down to your desk, and then you just kind of do that folding hand position. And at this point, it's usually when you're burnt out, you're overexhausted, you're pushing yourself too hard. It looks like she got some coffee in her cup, right? And this is an a, this is a key sign that you are beyond your limits. And this the society that we've been left with today unfortunately pushes for us to go beyond our limit. And it doesn't matter what industry that you're in, whether it's nurses being exhausted or HR professionals um, being overburdened with work or the fact that we have we still have a hiring shortage, tie that into the recession post COVID, right? There are so many factors that have caused us to say, I'm just gonna keep going. And in the moment we believe that this is a good thing. Yes, I have the strength, I'm gonna keep on trotting through, but what happens is that if we just took the time to rest, if we said, yes, I will continue, but, right, actually not even but, yes, I will continue and I will take a break now. I will step away for an hour. I will take a nap. I will get some rest. I'll go outside and get some sunlight. Then I'll come back. You will be twice as productive and you will have diverted that burnout. Um, and this has been proven by multiple studies of just if we step away for a moment and then we revisit that project, one, we come back with more clarity and something if we had tried to push through, quote unquote, keep going, um, that task may have taken us another two hours to complete because our mind is not there. We're not focused. We're overwhelmed versus if we take a break, right? We use one of those hours to take a break. Then we come back task is finished in 30 minutes. So, you know, if you're, if you've ever experienced this, let us know in the chat, right? Like, have you experienced, like you, you stepped away by the time you come back, then you feel so refreshing. You're just like, where did I get this boost of energy? It's the sun. I promise you it's the sun. It's eating that snack. It's watching, you know, senseless TV, a comedy, whatever it may be. It's unplugging and doing something that feeds you versus pushing and pushing and pushing and continue putting out the output. So let's begin. How do I identify burnout? So like I said, this is from my own experience, as well as many colleagues, um, family members, friends over the years, right, that I've spoken to around how do you feel? And the first thing that usually starts to happen when you're going through burnout is it starts coming on in your body, right? Your, you know, your, your back starts hurting, you know, your head starts hurting, your arms, like you're just literally in pain. And you're like, what is happening? Did I hit myself? Did I hurt myself? Like how, why is my body attacking me? And then after that, the next place that burnout goes is to your mind. Things that you loved. And I'm talking about loved. Um, I love to write. I love to read. And when I'm just like, I don't want to read nothing. I don't want to write nothing. I don't want to do any type of work. And I'm like, oh, 
signal, signal, signal. It's like literally like a buzzer starts going off in my head. Like, whoa, I'm at phase two. I'm not even at phase one, right? Because phase one can be misinterpreted sometimes. Maybe you went to the gym, you know, you exercise a little bit, you have some body aches or, you know, you got a bad mattress, et cetera. Um, or you step on Legos, guilty of that as well. And so the body pains may be misinterpreted. But when I feel the body and then the second part, the mind starts comboing, I'm like, oh, red flag, red flag, red flag. Something deeper is happening here. And, you know, again, you start disliking things that are your passion, your things that you love, that you would do for free. And you're just like, oh, get it away from me. I want no parts of this. And, you know, you're just getting angry, right? People are asking you questions. Like, Leave me alone. You're getting frustrated, right? The mind starts to go. And then after the mind, then the heart, right? Again, things that you love. You're just like, I don't want to do it. I am not interested. I want to quit, right? Who, who, you know, raise your hand, you know, put a cup in the chat if you've ever felt like that. Like, I want to quit. I want to get out of here. This is trouble. Just send me to an island immediately and I never want to come back, right? Your heart starts to just feel sad, right? You, you know, depression starts coming in. You start wanting to be distant from people and things that you loved, right? And that's the real, like, okay, this is where we are and we are now completely burnt out. And we explode. And an explosion could look very different based on who you are. And as an individual, you may experience multiple versions of the fully exploded burnout. Um, you know, I'm happy to share, well, not happy. <laughs> I want to share my story of one of the times when I got to the point of burnout, my body and my mind just shut down. I was in the middle of the city and I could not, literally, I couldn't, I didn't know where I was, didn't know what I was doing. And I got so overwhelmed. I literally just stood there and started crying. I remember my mom's phone number. And so I called her and she came, she, you know, she, she got me an Uber and I was able to go to her house and to resolve this burnout. She said, take a shower. She made me a meal and she forced me to take a nap. And this wasn't so long ago. Literally I'm in my mid twenties and my mom is literally forcing me to take a shower. Um, forced me to take a nap. And she's like, you need to eat this meal. And after I did those three things, when I say I felt like I was reborn, it was, I was just like, how did that just fix me? Like, I literally thought I was just on the edge. Like I didn't, I was panicking. I didn't know what was happening. So that was one case, right? Where I'm, I just shut down. I did not know what was happening. Another case where my chest literally started getting so tight and I'm just like, what's happening? I thought I had an allergic reaction to something. And mind you, I'm not allergic to anything. So there was just huge tightening in my chest to the point where I called um, my brother and he ended up taking me to the ER. We get to the ER and they're like, everything's fine. And I'm just like, shoot, was that a panic attack? Like, you know, I've had panic attacks before, but it was never like, I literally felt like I was having a heart attack or something. And so that was another um, trigger and another signal of burnout. And then there's, you know, I've other, I've had other experiences and, you know, maybe this is resonating with you. So just put it in the chat. If this, if you've ever experienced any of these things, another time it's just like, I woke up, I'm like, I do not want to get out of this bed. I do not want to touch any of this work. I am not interested in doing anybody's jobs today. Um, so, you know, that was another version of burnout. So it could look different for different people. And you may be hit with all of the different types of what burnout looks like. But I want you to get to the point of of avoiding burnout the best as possible, which, we're, which, is, which is what we're going to talk about next. But again, before we move on to identify burnout is coming, right? You start to feel it in your body first, then it starts going into your mind, right? You're stressed, you're overwhelmed, you're on edge, and then your heart goes. And you're just like things that you used to love, be passionate about, you have no interest in. You don't want to touch them, you don't want to do them, you don't want to interact with it at all. And it then triggers full-blown burnout. So what to do when I feel burnt out, right? So now you're burnt out. What do you do to get back to equilibrium? The first thing I want to advise you to do is go ahead and ask for help. So in that example I gave earlier where my mom contacted, you know, I contacted my mom. That was me asking for help. Like a little, I literally couldn't think of anything else in that moment. Like I need my mommy, like a grown woman in the middle of the city. I need my mom. And so whether that person is a family member, whether that is a close friend, right? Everybody's family dynamic 
and everybody's tribe and circle looks different. So whether that, you know, that may be your mom, it may be your dad, it may be a guardian, it may be a godmother, it may be a, a close work friend, it may be your partner. So who, or it may be your therapist. So whoever that person in your life is that you can reach out to and ask for help, do that. And if you don't have a person in your life like this, I advise you immediately to start working on finding one. Well, I don't have the time. I don't have the relationships. I don't, you know, want to reach out. Everyone deserves at least one person in their circle that they can trust, that they can reach out to in case of an emergency. And there are what, I think we hit 8 billion, right? <laughs> There's over 7 billion people on this planet you can find at least one. They may not be on the same continent as you. They might not even speak the same language as you. So let's, you know, put that effort in to find or person or tribe or circle or community. And my community has looked different, right? I do have a, a family community. I have virtual online communities of friends, Facebook groups that have been so essential. I have people that I've been really close to and I will call at the drop of a line that I have never met. We've been close. We've been talking for seven plus years. And that's one of the powers of the internet, right? Um, and I, I know I could call these people in, you know, in a, in a rough time and they could either point me to resources, call, you know, Uber Eats and send me a meal if I'm overwhelmed, right? There are people that I could tap into. So find your people. They exist. They are out there and they want you to be a part of that community. They want you to be a part of that circle. So find your people and then ask for help when you're feeling burnt out. Next up, slow down you are not running against the clock. And if you don't send those 25 emails tonight at end of day, as you promised, I'm pretty sure you're not working for the CDC and alerting the CDC leaders that you know we have another pandemic outbreak. So you can send the email a little bit later or tomorrow. Um, if you are working for the CDC and you have to send out an, uh, that information, I'm, I don't want to in, in, enforce burnout, but I'm going to ask you to hit send or delegate that to someone else on your team. But most of our work is not in such critical fields that you, we cannot slow down. And if you are doing work that you cannot slow down, you have to then take a look at the work that you're doing and then analyze, like, is this the best fit for me? You know, maybe disrupt that industry, right? We, we are seeing AI, blockchain, um, streamlining of things, technology replacing different roles. Maybe that's your opportunity to disrupt that industry and say, hey, this does not work. We're leading all of our folks to burnout, to overwhelm, to stress. Why are we doing that, right? We And then I'll give a, um, go back to another example where the people that are in the most life-threatening fields, such as doctors and nurses, um, are at the highest risk for burnout and unfortunately also at the highest risk for suicide because of that overwhelm. And it is, you know, it's hard to slow down if you have to do a heart transplant in the morning um, or somebody comes in and they have an emergency heart transplant that is needed. So in those critical fields, right, burnout is at its highest. And unfortunately, suicide is also at its highest. Um, and we have to be able to, you know, be aware that, or mental health, right? Once our brain goes, once our bodies go, we are in turmoil. We are in a hard space to come back from. So slowing down before you get to that point. And that's what I mentioned earlier about making time, making room for error. If you think something's gonna take you two hours, don't promise your team, your employer, two hours. Promise them, hey, I, you know, if you want to put a promise to it, say, hey, I'll get this back to you in three hours or four hours. Just in case something happens in that time, you know, an emergency comes up, um, you feel extra tired, right? Uh, you want to grab a snack or, you know, some things happen beyond our control. So that's why we have to use what we can control. So you can control how much time you save. And so adjust it for even more time than you need. And if you get it back to them a little earlier, you know, they have a little smile on their face. But putting yourself against that clock, putting yourself against those tight timelines is leading to that extra burnout, that extra overwhelm. So within that slowing down and then putting in time for error in whatever activities that you're doing so that way you can go at a pace that feels good, feels comfortable, and then you're able to achieve that goal and then feel rewarded at the end instead of, oh my gosh, you know, I got it done in two hours, but I cannot do anything else. I need my bed. I need to take a nap. I need to relax. And then the next thing is be kind to your mind. As I just mentioned, or minds is 
you know, one of the most powerful pieces and, you know, tools in our bodies. Um, you know, I shared the story of that panic attack that I had. My brain was telling my body that we were in danger. Um, we are not living in, you know, BC where with dinosaurs and there was no actual danger, but because of the adrenaline, because of all the emotions that were inside of me, uh, feeling burned out, my brain was telling my body, we are in danger, you know, release the crackings, <laughs> like release everything to make us not in danger anymore. And that wasn't true. I was in no physical danger, no real emotional danger. Um, and, but because my, I had just overpowered my brain, I had pushed it too hard. I got burnt out. My mind couldn't separate that. So I said, listen, let's put all the protective measures in, you know, increase heart rate. We have to fight or flight. And so that's where it comes in. Be kind to your mind. And that looks like taking, you know, doing the things that I mentioned before, asking for help, slowing down, taking breaks, right? Removing information, putting in room for um, entertainment, room for not thinking too much, um, you know, because if our mind goes, everything else will follow. So be kind to your mind, be gentle with yourselves, and that will also help you to recover from burnout as well as avoid burnout in the first place. So what happens after burnout, right? Um, so we talk, oh, sorry, hitting the buttons too fast. So what happens after burnout is that you have a new sense of yourself, right? You understand how you could avoid it. You're like, maybe I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. And now you have a toolkit. So, you know, we don't want to get to the point of burnout, but what happens after burnout is now that you have tools because you've recovered from that burnout and now you have tools that you can put in your toolkit to help you avoid burnout in the first place. Um, and, you know, reduce your speed. We just talked about that, right? Slowing down, asking for help, and then being kind to your mind is how you can avoid that burnout. So you can be productive, you can be joyous, you can continue doing the great work that you love to do without getting to the point where you're just overwhelmed, your body's going, your mind is going, your heart is going, and you want no parts of this activity. <clears throat> so I'm Georgianne Gettin, um, and this has been how to increase your productivity and how to avoid burnout. So as a quote we started in the beginning, don't wait for um, think time to force you to make a change. Make that change consciously and on your own time. Choose to make a change now, not in a minute, not in a couple of weeks, in a couple of days. You can make that change right now, today. So when you're scheduling out your meetings, create room from er forever, right? Creating buffers in between the things that you have to do. And if you estimate a certain amount of time, add more time to give yourself the room and space to for life to happen right because life does what it's <laughs> what it wants and so we cannot control what will happen but we can control how what we do about it and what we do before those things happen to decrease the likeliness of it throwing us off of our feet um so now there are a few minutes so i'll be happy to open it up for questions um, if anyone wants to share their experiences or get feedback on how to avoid burnout, how to identify burnout, and what to do after um, they've experienced burnout. If you want to contact me um, in the future, you can go ahead and send me an email at hey at gsdwithgeorgie.com, as well as on all social media, I'm at gsdwithgeorgie. Georgie, I am absolutely like I, I had to mute myself because I was screaming yes at the top of my lungs like 47 times while you were talking. Um, and I was loving the conversations being had in the chat as well. Um, Mary A had commented, who knew that our bodies needed kindness too? And that was something that really resonated with me, especially like I, I can be very mean to myself on occasion. And mm -hmm. a lot of the ways that I still do it are by like denying myself creature comforts or even just like basic stuff. And so like that, that idea of like, no, 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 no. Can't just take care of this up here. It kind of has to be a holistic thing. Um, exactly. Is there anything that you started doing to be kind to your body that surprised you at the payoff of it? Um, you know, how, how quickly it resonated or how much good it did for you? Yeah. Um, I'll say two things. The first thing is accepting my body the way it is right now. So we are always trying to lose weight, get, you know, curvier or slimmer or get gain weight, muscle, all the things, right. 
And mm-hmm. I think, um, especially I know um, women experience, you know, body shaming, right? I, I've had two kids. And so my body doesn't look the way I, you know, want it to, right? And I would just say, I won't wear that or I won't do those things until I lose the weight, until I curve up or until it looks a certain way. And when I started saying to myself, I'm going to love the body the way it is now, and I'm going to love it whenever it gets to, you know, my goal size and goal look and features. And that actually helped me to lose the weight a little, a lot, a lot faster, right? I was struggling for a while as well as feed myself. Cause I would say, you know, I'm not going to eat these things. And then I would end up binge eating or it's just like, I'm not going to eat cookies or snacks. And, you know, again, I have kids, so there's snacks all over my house (laughs) and I'm just like depriving myself. And because I wanted to avoid quote unquote, the bad things, I was also avoiding the good things for me. So whether that's eating fruits, trying new foods, going out to eat. And I didn't realize how much of a negative impact that had on, on myself, right. Even at, when I went to events or work programmings, like People are like, oh, what you want to eat? I'm like, I don't know, just whatever. Like, I just didn't care about food because I'm just like, it's going to impact my body in, you know, potentially a negative way. So I just was like, avoid it at all costs. But then not eating led to a whole other, you know, plethora of <laughs> health yeah. effects. Or just when I did see now a snack, I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat like three buckets of ice cream. <laughs> um, and then I'll fix it later, right? Like, I'll focus on the body later. So embracing the way it is now as well as just feeding my body the things that I liked in portions that were good for me, right? So now I don't binge um, and just go crazy. It's just like, okay, I'll have a little Twix and I know it's not gonna be the be all end all. I'll enjoy my Twix, I'll enjoy my ice cream, but I also have my fruit and my mixtures and my vegetables. So just mixing it up has really been impactful for me. <laughs> I love that. And I, you know, I think it's something that we we don't necessarily talk about as much as we should, but that idea of like, like enjoying life, right. Taking joy in things. Um, I'm, I'm agnostic, but, um, it's one of the, the beautiful things that I have friends who are, um, who are Jewish that practice. And one of the things they talk about is that they don't believe in like an afterlife, heaven, hell, that kind of thing. But Mm. the idea that you have to account, you know, at the end of your life to God or to your higher power, um, for, you know, what you did in your life. And that includes the good things and the bad things, but it also includes you have to talk about why you didn't take joy in the places that you could have. And that for me, (laughs) was incredibly powerful because it's like, oh, I could have been happy. Why didn't I do that? Because we think we're not allowed to. So, you know, I love that. Take all the joy you can because there's going to be so many moments that you have zero control in if you have the joy. So when it's offered to you and you do have the control, take it. Cause I promise you <laughs> there will be more than enough times that are out of your control that will rip that joy from you quicker than you know it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, okay. We did get some questions in the chat at the very end. I'm apologizing y'all. We're not going to be able to hit them, but um, I'll be jumping back in there into the chat. Georgie, if you want to, you're more than welcome to jump into the chat on our website. Um, so hopefully what we can get y'all some answers. Um, but especially uh, the person that had asked about leaving a toxic workplace and, you know, how do you, um, how do you talk about that later? We've got some great chats. I'm going to add them to the, to the links here in just a little bit in the chat function. So um, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll head over and answer those questions in the chat for you guys as much as I can. Thank you so much. This has been lovely to learn from you. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your expertise with us. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this platform and I'm, you know, good luck on the rest of the conference, everyone. And thank you for being here today.